This is Larry Thornton, jet pilot, U.S. Marine Corps. He is 23 years old, a native of Arizona. This is his story. Sometimes this whole thing is hard to believe. Here I am with several tons of aircraft strapped to my back, waiting to get shot into flight from a catapult. The amazing thing is, only two years ago, I was still in college. It all began one day in my senior year. Graduation was coming up, and I still hadn't figured out what I was going to do. A few companies had made me offers, but nothing I really wanted. They all sounded like the kind of routine job you settle down in for the rest of your life. I didn't know what I was looking for, but that wasn't it. My future began to take shape when I ran into an old friend. Jim Hughes had been a couple of years ahead of me. Now that two years seemed to make more of a difference than ever. I guess it was the Marine uniform and the wings, those golden wings. But after we'd talked for a while, I began to see we weren't really so different. I was fascinated by his stories, especially about learning to fly the jets. I always thought it took some special breed of man to be a jet pilot. But Jim was pretty much like me. Not a four-letter man, not a Phi Beta Kappa. I remember thinking, if he can make it through flight training, why can't I? It was a challenge, and that's what really did it. It was a challenge, and I was bound to try. So, a few months after graduation, I set out toward my new goal. The building of a marine aviator begins in the classrooms of pre-flight. Here, you learn the fundamentals. The basic ingredients that get you ready for the T-34 aircraft. In these planes, you take your first bouncing steps into the air. first few flights, you try so hard that you may not find much chance to enjoy it. I knew what I wanted to do, but sometimes my hands and feet just didn't get the message. Like in the power-off stall, I had to keep the wings level until the nose started dropping. My landings were even worse. Mr. Thornton, if you insist on trying to land the plane 20 feet above the runway, you'll bounce like that every time. I couldn't help thinking maybe I was just too clumsy, or maybe I just plain couldn't hack it. But that feeling doesn't last forever. Your flying improves, and so does your confidence. Then comes that inevitable day when the instructor gets out and leaves you on your own. And there I was. Delighted, but a little scared.
Soloing is the best builder of confidence in the world. You prove to yourself that you really can fly. In the weeks that follow in ground training, lecture periods will alternate with flights. On each flight in the T2A, you practice something different, like night flying. You learn the technique of landing on an aircraft carrier, using a runway marked off to the size of a carrier deck. I used to think I'd find this pretty rough. They always say that from the air, a carrier deck looks like a postage stamp. Well, it's true. And I'd practiced landing on that postage stamp many times. But now this postage stamp had water around it. And for some reason, it looked even smaller. It takes a lot of knowledge and skill. And that's the thing. I was out there to prove that I had enough skill to bring it off. was a challenge and, well, a thrill. But I guess you never really know what it's like until you've done it yourself. And then it was time to move on, time to specialize. For some, advanced training means helicopters. In a light training model, he will discover that a helicopter is one of the trickiest of all aircraft to control. But within a few weeks, he will have acquired the techniques and learned the tricks. As a helicopter pilot, he will come to have a role unique in the history of warfare. But for Larry Thornton, advanced training meant something else. It meant jets. And it meant more ground school. That never stops. Flying isn't any more a seat of the pants affair. It's a highly complex science. For today's aircraft, you've got to know a lot more than when to pull the stick or when to push a pedal. You've got to know the aerodynamics, the physics, the mathematics, and the engineering of every plane you fly, plus weather, tactics, and a host of other things. This was what I'd been hoping for and working for. I chose marine aviation, partly because it offered me the best chance of ending up right here, in the jets. To me, this is where today's real challenge of flying is. Maneuvering in formation with just a few feet between aircraft. Relying on your own skill and the skill of others and performing tricky maneuvers with fancy names like Emmelman, Split S, and Cuban 8. And remember what you learned in all those classrooms. Remember the aerodynamics the flight characteristics of your plane. Here is the science of flight in action. Still in training, I was already flying the F-11A, just like the Blue Angels use, with the best fighter pilots in the world for instructors. And 
when you finally master all of it, there is a little ceremony where you get your wings of gold. You join your new squadron and assume the duties and responsibilities of a Marine officer. My main job was to become proficient in a supersonic fighter, the F-4B. The squadron had one of the most important missions in marine aviation, and one of the most rewarding, to provide air support for the ground forces. In flight training, I'd learned the techniques. Here, it was a matter of practice and more practice. But now, all that is behind me. Now the time has come for me to face a realistic test of my skill and knowledge. The entire fleet is taking part in a full-scale landing exercise. Since dawn, aircraft have been softening up the beach. Troops are going ashore by Amtrak's. And by Marine helicopter. Lieutenant Thornton's assignment, a combat air patrol in the beachhead area. It's an axiom that an opposed landing can't succeed without control of the skies. I help provide that control. Blue leader, this is Groundhog 1. Target 6782. Request rocket run. Roger, Groundhog Run, rolling in. Blue leader, this is a Groundhog One. Target 80% destroyed. Taking part in this operation brings home how versatile the Marine Corps really is. Here are ground troops. Jet fighters. Attack aircraft. Giant turboprops for transport and refueling. And helicopters, all part of the Marine Corps air ground team. For Larry Thornton and the thousands of men like him who have accepted this challenge. Well, they've come a long way. From college students to professional pilots and officers in the proudest fighting force in the world, the United States Marine Corps.